Hey, what's going on folks, it's Mike here, and today I'm gonna to be sharing to you a lesson that is part of my Vim course on setting up tags in an awesome plugin known as TagBar. Now I'm sharing this to the world because this is something that just took me forever to get my head around with what tags were in Vim, for instance, and why I needed them for things like code completion or otherwise navigating to the source code of my dependencies. Because how often do you just wanna jump to the definition and see the actual source code, if it's available, and how it works? Well, again, this is gonna be the video for you. Now I've done some other content on this sort of IntelliSense and code completion, so you can check that out. But again, this is just another video to help you be more productive in Vim. And again, this is one of those features that was often missing if you were coming from an IDE and transitioning to Vim. And again, this is just one of the things though that I really, really like about Vim and helps continue make Vim editing lightning fast for me. So anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and dive into the lesson and enjoy. So I'm gonna be showing you this awesome plugin today called TagBar. It's this panel that you see above me here, which gives me a nice outline of my program. I can use something like F9 if I map that key to toggle this on and off. So let's go ahead and do that here, F9. And again, you can have your full screen space or get to your outline. And I can simply do Control W and move over to this window and then use my Vim navigation to go into a function here. I can just hit enter for instance, and you'll see me jump to that function signature. And again, I can jump down or jump to the top of this list here and again, quickly navigate my source code. So this is an awesome thing that TagBar gives us. And there are similar plugins like TagList and GutenTags and other things for working with tag files to help you with this type of navigation. Now, ultimately what I wanna talk about today though is the idea of a tag in Vim and how we get this support for, well, just being able to jump between functions really quickly in our project and ultimately, our dependencies if we want to see how they're working and the different lines of code and what they're doing. So let me go ahead and explain just a little bit more with this idea of what a tag is. Okay, so let's just go ahead and from a terminal open an instance of Vim here. And I'm just going to go into the help system here and just do help and type in tags. And basically, we want to learn what a tag exactly is. So jumping to a tag, this will bring us to the tag commands here. And a tag is basically just an identifier that appears in a tags file. Okay, so that means that we're gonna need to somehow generate this tags file. And there's ways to do this automatically. I'm gonna show you how to do this manually today, and then you can decide how you want to do this. And there's different advantages of doing this versus say a language server protocol in that one, the tags file will have to be kept up to date and you'll have to manage those files, but they're relatively fast databases to just look up exactly where something is in a source code project. So if you have some dependency, some library that's not changing, again, a tags file might be a great lightweight option for just getting up and running. Okay, so again, what is a tag? Well, it's sort of a label. And basically what we're gonna see is a tag file that we generate is going to have something like the function name and the source location. And ultimately that's what we want because then we'll be able to jump to that location and see the definition or the declaration of some struct function, something that'll be useful for us while we're coding. So again, we can understand how things work. So for example, as described here in a C program, a function name can be used as a tag and then the tags will be generated with a program like C tags. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at the next step. How do we generate these tag files? Now in order to get started and generate a tags file, we're gonna use a program called C tags. Now tag files can also be generated from tools like Bear or maybe your build system can do this, but we're gonna go ahead and start by doing this manually just so you understand everything that's going on. So C tags is the program that we're gonna use. If you don't have it installed, you can try something like sudo apt install C tags, type in your super secret password, and basically, if you don't have C tags, maybe you'll get some suggestions. So we're gonna use universal C tags. Uh, and if you're following along on Mac or on Windows, you could try something like brew install C tags and find something similar. These are the most popular. If you search on the web for universal C tags or exuberant C tags, you might have a direct download from there. So anyways, let's go ahead and install universal C tags here. And you'll see that I already have it installed, but it's a relatively small install. Now let's go ahead and look at the manual page for C tags, which you can look up online or just do in your terminal here. And again, you'll see the goal of this tool is to generate a tag file for source code. Now there's a bunch of different options here that we'll also wanna explore for how we generate a tag file, but we'll do a little bit of an example. 
Now, why I'm using universal C tags is one of the cool things is if we look at C tags help, and maybe if we look through some of the different options, we might have to grep through them. And let's just grep for the word languages. Uh, and let's go ahead and look at this option here, C tags list languages. We'll see that it basically supports probably any language that you're interested in. If you're following along on my YouTube, you see I use C, C++, D, CUDA, uh, you know, all these different uh, languages, pretty much anything that's common, you can generate a tag for and be able to jump to. And I'm sure there's ways to add support as well if it's not already supported. So again, this is why this universal C tags is a pretty good tool for most folks, uh, unless of course you're developing your own language and then you'll again have to probably add on some functionality here. Okay, now let's go ahead and see how to generate a tags file. Now in order to do this, it's best if you just jump into some directory that has code. Uh, I'm gonna move into my SDL3 directory here and you'll see that there are source files here. I can go ahead and list them out here and I wanna generate this tags file. Okay, now you'll see that I've already done this but I wanna show you what's in the tag file and then we'll go ahead and generate again so you can get an idea of what's in this file. So let's open up the tags file just to get a preview of one that's been successfully generated. And you'll see the format here. Now you'll basically see some keys here, maybe some string here representing the function or a structure name. Uh, it looks like there's a lot here. And then importantly, you'll see in the next line here, it looks like we have a source file location. So if I'm able to successfully load this tag file, I'll know exactly where to find this source so I can jump to it. And again, I have the tag or the sort of keyword when I'm highlighting over it for either auto completion or again, jumping to the definition here. So that is the premise of what a tag file is and what it looks like. And now we're gonna go ahead and generate a tag file. So when it comes to actually generating the tags file, we have a lot of different options that we can take a look at. So again, you can do C tags, help and explore a bunch of these options, but I'm gonna give you a few of the nice ones that we'll probably wanna start with. And let's just go ahead and start with the simple case here. So first and foremost, if you already have a tags file, let's go ahead and remove that tags file here, just to make sure that, again, we have a clean slate so that you can see that it's gone. And let's go ahead and regenerate a new tags file here. So I'll do C tags dash R to do a recursive search. That way it'll dive into each of these directories and any subdirectories and generate the appropriate tags. And again, this is my start location with the dot specified there. So I'll hit enter. And even for a relatively large project like this, the tag file will be generated quite quickly. So we can see tags has been generated and that's the default name for the tags file, which you can of course change. So let's go ahead and again, look at this tags file here. And you'll notice by default, it is sorted, which is very nice because, well, from a computer science perspective, sorting things tends to make search and code completion and these types of things much faster. So this is very good for us. So again, we can look at, see this is alphabetically sorted here. Okay, and that is the default option, but you can do dash dash sorted equals yes to get uh, sorted, or excuse me, it is just sort, I believe. And we could also just do no if we want if for some reason you don't wanna sort them. And that might be valuable, um, but let's go ahead and look at our tags file now. And we can clearly see that it is not sorted. It's just the order that it happened to find the different tags in each of the different files here. So again, uh, that's probably not what we want, probably not the default. Um, but one thing that we can do or might be interesting is if you have uh, a bunch of tags files for instance, we have one here, but we might wanna append to it or add. And again, this can be nice to just have one tags file to manage overall, or maybe per project if you wanna do that to make things simple, but I'm probably not gonna opt for that option here. But I just wanna tell you that it is option if you wanna build tooling around tags. So again, you can do C tags, and let me just show you in the manual page, uh, the append option here, which you can do to an existing tag file, okay? So that's uh, something useful. Now, another uh, useful option is the exclude option. Uh, let's see if I can spell it right. There we are, exclude. Uh, let's see here. Let's do dash dash exclude here. Uh, or if to go to the top of the file here, dash dash. And here's the pattern here. So 
For instance, if you have a project that has, say, a bunch of different languages, or for some reason it's picking up the HTML documentation that might be mixed in with the source, you might want to exclude the .html files. So in that case, we could do something like uh, c tags exclude, uh, and let's just put in a pattern here, HTML, uh, for some reason. Uh, here we are, exclude. And that'll get rid of all the HTML files if it happened to find any, because again, that is a thing that C tags might support. Okay. Uh, all right. So that gives us the basics of how to generate a tags file, what it is, and some different things that we can do with it. Now we want to actually make use of this in Vim or again, whatever text editor you're using, maybe Vim, NeoVim, or well, this is a Vim video. So of course you're using Vim. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. Okay, so we're going to work on two things at once here, getting our tags set up in Vim here. Because we ultimately want to install this tag bar plugin, which is going to be useful for showing us our tags now that we have them, and then ultimately make use of that tags file that we generated in this directory. And this is where it happens to be for me here. So let's go ahead and complete those options here. I'm going to go ahead and open up my Vim RC. And um, again, what we're going to do here first is install the plugin here, and you'll see this is under the preserve Vim GitHub repo, or you can otherwise just search for tag bar in GitHub or tag bar Vim, and you'll likely find this. And again, it's just a matter of installing the plugin here. Uh, and this is the particular one that I'm using from this repository. And I also have mapped uh, from normal mode, the F9 key to toggle the uh, tag bar or tag bar toggle just so I don't have to type that out. I found that that works for me and you might map this to a different key otherwise. And that'll again give us our nice tag bar. Now as far as na the native support for uh, tags in Vim, well, what did I just say? It's native support. It's, it's already there. So we don't really have to do anything there. So as far as installing tag bar, just do plugin install. I'm using bundle and that'll get things uh, set up here. But otherwise, as far as your uh, tags go, uh, and let's see, I already have this uh, set up here. Basically, what we can do here, uh, it looks like I also have tag bar uh, toggled for uh, F4, <laughs> so I can use either. Uh, but basically, what we want to do here is set our tags uh, associated here. So I basically just set the tags here. Uh, and the semicolon, or excuse me, uh, yeah, semicolon at the end here is significant. Uh, and that'll sort of search from that directory and up if it doesn't find a tags file. Uh, and we can have multiple tags files as well here. So usually we do the set tags plus equals, something like that here. And then we can have multiple tag files uh, found here. So again, you could set this up as a sort of per project if you are using this particular library, which I'm using SDL if you're following along in my YouTube videos for game and graphics programming. Um, again, you could set this up for a project as well or comment these out. Again, it's just sort of up to you for what you'll find useful. You probably don't want to search every single tag that's possible uh, across all of your projects. But again, this is easy enough to set up and have a little configure command for when you launch BIM. Okay, so with that said, we now have our tags here. Let's just open up any empty old source file here. I'm just going to call it empty CPP. And let's just start typing something out. And let's use either um, F4 or F9, whatever key you have mapped to get your tags. And we'll see main shows up here. So the tag bar uh, is working, uh, should be working. And every time I save, um, or reload a buffer, it'll refresh. So it'll just take a little bit of time here to get those functions, but uh, we have them up and running here. So now let's ultimately do the next experiment here, which is to look for one of those functions that I have. And I'll go ahead and start typing out SDL underscore and then control P for my autocomplete. And then you'll see we have all these different options here. And you can see I have a bunch of uh, enumerations it looks like here. And let's see if we uh, scroll up to something, maybe some interesting function here, if we have a source location here, SDL blit. Okay, let's go ahead and try that here. And it auto completed, which was nice from my list of tags that I have, but where's the source file location? Let's see if we can find it. So we can do uh, control W and then the uh, open bracket, uh, or <clears throat> as seen there, and that'll jump to 
a preview window here where I can find this function here, where it created the tag here. So I guess this is the function here. There's a little bit of extra decoration here uh, for my C and C++ programmers to understand. Uh, but otherwise, we should be able to see the function signature here. So we can see it's something that takes in a source, a surface, and so on and so forth. OK, so there we have it. Uh, we have our function. Um, and uh, we can type this out. So really, as simple as that to get the sort of completion and be able to see the definition here. Now, some other useful things here. Let me go ahead and uh, show here. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into this window here. So I use Control W to jump around in my windows. Let me click to remove some of the noise here. And let's just go ahead and explore uh, this file here, this, this window that was opened up here. And as I scroll around here, Again, this is the library that we built the tags for. Let's see if we find something interesting. And let's go ahead and kind of navigate. I mean, there's a bunch of macros here. Let's find some actual functions. Maybe we didn't find a good file here. Uh, yeah, something like SDL surface. Sure, let's do that. There's probably a tag for this type here. Um, unless this is the actual surface. No, this is blood info. So we'll go ahead and dive in. So how do I dive into this? Well, I can do again, um, a control and then the uh, right uh, open bracket there. And that'll jump me to SDL surface. I say, Oh, there's something interesting there. What is this part of it? And again, I'll pause control and the right uh, bracket. And then now I'm in surface flags. So this is how we can sort of jump back and forth. Now, You'll notice that I'm in some file that maybe I have no idea where I am or some location. I just want to get back to my original context. So I can do control T and control T and that'll kind of take me back through the stack, so to speak, of the different jumps that I did. You can also use control O, uh, for instance, to jump forward or control I if you're used to that. Again, built into Vim, but if you want to use the tags, uh, control T will jump you through the different tag stack of the different tags that you've specifically jumped through. OK, so that's pretty much it as far as tags go. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope this was a very useful lesson for working with tags in Vim. If you're just getting started with Vim or want to pick up some other tricks or see what other type of plugins I'm using, feel free to check out my course. Otherwise, I've got a lot of other great content on Vim on YouTube, so feel free to search there. So again, thank you for your time and attention, folks. I hope you learned something. hope you had fun. And again, let me know if you have other favorite plugins, tricks, or other ways that you work with tags in Vim or other tricks that folks should know about. Anyways, thanks again for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.